and um, open up for a public hearing. Anybody would like to speak? Not seeing any, we'll close the public hearing. And it's an action, and um, so I would accept a motion. Move approval. Second. Comments? Not seeing any. All in, all in favor? That's unanimous. Moving on to old business. Order number 16-002, act on the names posted to the various town committees and boards as recommended by the appointments committee. Um, is there any public comment? Not seeing any. And is there a motion from the body? So moved. Second. And um, I did find out that we did not need to read those into a record. Again, they were read in once, so if you would like to see them, they are in our minutes. Um, any comments? Any other comments? Oh. Yes, it's I just want to thank everybody who's uh, volunteered to be on uh, committees. Um, I think that it's a great opportunity to get involved in this town, and I appreciate people uh, giving them their time. Any other comments? Not seeing any. All in favor? And that is unanimous. Moving on to new business, order number 16-003, act on the request to approve the findings and order pursuant to Title 17 MRSA 2851-2859, dangerous buildings on property owned by Douglas S. Brown, located at 9 Partridge Lane in Scarborough. Uh, any public comments? Not seeing any, I'm going to turn this over to the manager and our staff. Yes, as the council will recall at your last meeting on December 16, a uh, town attorney was here, helped guide you through a process. You actually uh, convened a formal public hearing which had proper legal notice. Uh, the property owner, Mr. Brown, uh, appeared that evening and offered uh, comments or testimony back to council. He made some preliminary um, decisions and gave staff direction. Uh, based on that, we've, uh, we've kind of fleshed it out further and provided formal findings for your consideration tonight and an actual order uh, for you to kind of consummate uh, that understanding. And that's what's before you this evening. Um, Brian Longstaff is here, the zoning administrator who's been uh, working on this uh, for the better part of a year and um, can provide an update as to some progress between uh, that's happened since the last time you met, if that'd be helpful as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. Um, yeah, not much to report other than the structure did get secured within 24 hours as the council had um, ordered um, after the hearing. Um, and then uh, as we had agreed, the 30 day um, period to clean out the hazardous waste and, uh, and trash from the, the uh, structure will start upon uh, your consummation of this order. Um, just this morning, I had, I had reached out uh, late yesterday to Mr. Brown uh, by email, got an email return uh, this morning that uh, he no longer feels that he is capable of um, bringing the structure back to repair. Mm. He has requested some time to get his belongings, what belongings he can salvage out of the structure, so we'll work with him on that. Um, but just so you know, it doesn't look like um, that undertaking is actually going to happen um, as we suspected the house is quite far along and it would take some substantial time and effort to bring it back which I, I didn't believe that he had and I think he's come to that realization as well so that's the latest that I have on that and if I could say um, with that information I, I did consult with uh, the town attorney actually uh, Councilor Babine was was there part of that conversation uh, the attorney's advice is for the council to still consider and pass this okay. this matter as it provides very important foundation. Uh, there is a mortgage interest in the property, and so though it looks as though we, we will likely be able to kind of work through a, a consent agreement with Mr. Brown, we'll still have to reckon with uh, the mortgage interest as well. Mm. So this provides all the authorization needed, and uh, it's very likely, and we're hopeful <coughs> that the timeline gets truncated a bit by mutual agreement of parties. Uh, but w we would highly recommend you can still consider passing this this evening. Any questions for staff? No. Before we get into it. And is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Comments? Council member comments? Yes, Ms. Katarina. I had to uh, think what your name was there for a second. <laughs> I was just saving you. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
thank you to Manager Hall for answering my question. My question was, well, given that, do we still go ahead and and sign this, which, uh, you know, I agree that, you know, having the formality of the sign will be important for anything f down fu in future, and also just to hold Mr. Brown accountable for um, doing what he says he's going to do, because I know it's been a long haul for code enforcement and others, um, and I appreciate all the time and effort that's that's put into this. Uh, and I'm very happy to learn that Mr. Brown has come to the conclusion on his own that, um, yeah, maybe it's time to move on. So um, thank you for everyone who's put in the time and effort in this. And it, I will support. Uh, I'm sorry, I failed to mention the other very important thing this, this order does, it establishes the legal right for the town to recover yeah. fees that we right. may incur, and it, right. it's in all likelihood that we will will be incurring potentially significant demolition fees, uh, mm -hmm. depending how this might turn out. Mm -hmm. Other comments? So um, I, I too um, uh, am appreciative of Mr. Brown coming to that conclusion voluntarily. Um, that's probably one of the hardest things I think as a council you have to do is mm -hmm. determine that somebody's private property is not fit. Um, I think it was the right decision. I, I applaud the group for um, the discussion process and, and coming to that conclusion and the way we did it I thought was uh, certainly good for me to see and experience. Um, um, I did want to know though if uh, what, what kind of time frame we are looking at potentially for, for that process to move forward um, once it's, it's finalized. I know we have to go out to bid and we have to uh, look at all the other things for demolition, but is there a general time frame in mind? Or? Well, the backstop of, uh, provided here is 120 days. Yep. Uh, that would be kind of worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. In the event we're able to find, uh, to work it out in, through some other means between Mr. Brown and the mortgage holder, uh, through a consent agreement, it could be sooner than that. Um, the, the, we would go through a formal bid process, but uh, it would be fairly quick, probably a two week turnaround. Okay. Um, so I, I think uh, with this new information, it's, it's in all likelihood going to be done sooner than it would be done otherwise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Other comments? No? Uh, I just wanted to mention, I think that what this really is a testament to is um, when you put together a well-structured agreement, it, um, pr it really does protect both sides, and this really did do that. And I think that uh, now, I, I want to thank actually Mr. Brown for at least recognizing what he could and couldn't do quick enough so that we can respond quickly and get this taken care of. Um, so I want to make sure that I do want to ask one question though regarding the consent agreement, uh, not the consent agreement, the 120 days. Even if the mortgage holder has difficulties with the agreement, um, we can still act upon this even without their consent. It's my understanding, yes. We've okay. They've been provided notice along yeah. with Mr. Brown right along through the process. If there's anything that deviates, from this order is where we'll have to get further consent. Yeah. Bankers can be difficult, been there. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much and thank you to staff for yeah. the solution. Mm -hmm. um, if there's no other comments, uh, move approval. <clears throat> All in favor? That's five to nothing. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item is order number 16-004, act on the request to authorize the town manager to sign any and all documents relating to a confirmatory recreational easement on property located at Higgins Beach relating to the handicapped access path. Uh, any public comment? Not seeing any, I'm gonna turn this over to the town manager for an explanation. This is really a housekeeping matter back, uh, I'll give you a quick history. Back in 2001, the town was actually sued uh, for violations of the American with Disabilities Act. Uh, for uh, uh, allegedly failure to provide adequate handicap access to Higgins Beach in particular. Uh, the resolution of that suit uh, was the negotiation of an easement and ultimate construction of a path that still exists today uh, across the former Silver Sands lot, for those of you that are mm -hmm. history buffs. Uh, it was owned at the time by uh, Dr. Joan Kelly, and now it's, uh, it's subsequently owned by Bill Reichel, or Reichel. Uh, and as actually Mr. Rico that came forward and said, I was just looking through my paperwork and noticed that this easement was never recorded. Mm. And we did our own uh, research with the registry and sure enough it was not. So it's mm. in, clearly in the town's best interest to make certain yeah. that this is recorded. And kind of belt, uh, belt and suspenders approach, uh, the town attorney suggested that we come back, get reauthorized, 
and we've, uh, he's prepared a confirmatory recreational easement that attaches the original one as an exhibit. Questions from the council? No. Motion from the council. Just, sorry, quick question. Yes. Um, so Mr. Reichel is okay with this? He's fine? There's yes. no contention or anything like that? No, he, okay. uh, and, and I credit him for coming forward just making sure we had it all squared away. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Or motion? So moved. Second. Second by Peter. Any comments? No. Not seeing any. All in favor? That's five to nothing. Thank you. Well, I wish I put more things on this agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, order number 16-005, act to approve the resolve to accept donations for the fuel assistance program. And for the record, um, I'll be happy to enter this as a motion so it doesn't need to be second, uh, doesn't need to be reread again, but um, Town of Scarborough and the Town Council assembled it's dated December 23rd, 2015. When we'll the day it was done up. When it, that was the day it was done up. <laughs> resolve accepting donations for the fuel assistance program, be it hereby resolved by the town council as follows, that the town of Scarborough gratefully accepts the donations from the following business and or persons that have been collected to date to be used for the fuel assistance program. Mr. and Mrs. Robert W. Beal, and be it further resolved that each business organization and or person be recognized for their generous donations as a token of the town's appreciation. This was sponsored and originated by the town council, and that was in a form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Comments? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Beal for their uh, donation to the fuel assistance program, and I'm going to put in a plug. I usually start this time of year. Don't forget to get your uh, clink bags at town hall. Um, or if you want me to pick one up for you and I'll deliver it, I'm happy to do so. Uh, they uh, really help with um, this fuel assistance, which I know fuel is amazingly low right now, but even with that, there are people out there who have trouble uh, filling their, their oil tanks. Thankfully, it's been a warm winter so far, with the exception of yesterday. <laughs> um, and I hope it continues to be a warm winter, but we don't, we need money in the fuel fund. And uh, I just looked at my calendar. I'm pretty sure I have this right. We will be having our fuel rally with Project Grace on Saturday, February 6th. And I invite all the town councilors to come. I know I usually stand out on the sidewalk and wave a sign um, and, and help them in, in getting people to come. But anyway, that's it. Thank you. Any other comments? Can you forward that date? Hmm? Can you forward that date, please? Yeah. Yeah, oh, February 6th, yeah. Can you forward it, though? Just send forward it? Yeah, send an email, invite something, so it goes on the market. Oh, I will, Please. yes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Smoke signals, don't, slow. Smoke slow signals don't count anymore. No, Sorry. okay. <laughs> <laughs> any other comments? Not seeing any. All in favor? And that's unanimous. Um, item number eight on the agenda are non-action items. There are none. And moving to item number nine, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. And I'll start with Mr. Siazzo. Okay, so uh, I'll start off with um, appointments. Um, I'm, I'm sitting in for Councillor St. Clair, who, um, as, as Councillor Babine mentioned, is, is absent this evening. I uh, hope she's feeling better. Uh, but we had a meeting uh, this afternoon to review some of the appointments that, are, um, that were before us. Uh, so um, we had an opening in the Conservation uh, Committee uh, for a uh, full voting member. We've tabled that uh, until our next meeting. We had um, uh, several positions on the Shellfish Committee. So we moved um, Paul Erickson to a full voting member with the term to expire in 2018. We retained uh, Erica Downey for, as a full voting member uh, with her position to, uh, term, uh, to complete in 2018. And we nominated uh, Duane O'Rourke as an alternate with the term to expire in 2018 as well. Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, we appointed Karen Shoup as a second alternate mm. with a term to expire in 2018. And on the Scarborough Housing Alliance, we appointed Eric Boucher. Is it Boucher? I believe it's Boucher. Is it Boucher? Boucher? Uh, Blue? Boucher. I'm going to go with uh, Boucher. Thank you. <laughs> uh, as a full voting member with a term to expire in 2018. And uh, just for clarification, that is Erica Downs. 
what I say, uh, Erica Downey? Yeah, Sorry. It's okay. My handwriting. It is, Councilor Paybine's. <laughs> <laughs> I took <my> this. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then on the school board side of things, um, the uh, school board has engaged a company called NESDEC for the purpose of assisting in through their uh, executive search for the next superintendent in Scarborough. The board has contacted five school districts in Maine and New Hampshire and spoke with five school board chairs and two superintendents regarding their superintendent searches last year and the board is very pleased that uh, NESDEC uh, will assist them with that search. Um, they were also utilized in the last search um, for the previous superintendent. Uh, the school board will be meeting tomorrow evening and uh, at that time NESDEC's executive director Dr. Arthur Betancourt and Dr. Kenneth Debendicus, Benedictus, sorry, excuse me, um, senior search associate will do a presentation that will illustrate the process for conducting a search in collaboration with the board. Um, typically that search process takes about 120 days and the board anticipates a process that will be both professional and thorough and result in some very highly qualified candidates and they'll continue to update us as uh, the information unfolds. <coughs> Certainly I will be attending tomorrow uh, evening and it's open to the public as well so if you are curious as to how that process would work um, it's a good opportunity to to come and, and see it or at the very least watch it on on television um, and that's that's all I have for now thank you Councillor Hayes yeah actually I don't have anything it's been a quiet time over the holidays but <laughs> thank you and um, Councillor Rowan sure so uh, Sedco met um, uh, I had to leave early, um, so I'm going to let Sean fill in some of the gaps, but um, uh, some things discussed, there's some, some challenges finding quality employees. Um, we also discussed the Tim Hortons, um, Cabela's, the Martins Point Project, um, and another of other potential projects in various stages of planning. Um, one of the things mentioned was, was the uh, broadband initiative, the discussions we've been having, mm -hmm. um, and there, there was also a discussion of the uh, recap of the annual meeting um, and a guest speaker Sam Kelly came in and, and talked to the to the group about um, uh, entrepreneurship um, senior program advising also met um, you all have a letter on on your desk from uh, the <coughs> new director of that program Ed Mann um, he's uh, incredibly energetic and dynamic and we're I think we're lucky to have him as a as a director um, one of the things that that committee talked about was the excitement around the Martins Point uh, community room um, they um, uh, really in favor of having a, a space with it could be more accessible on a drop-in basis than the Wentworth school <coughs> so problems with accessibility um, <coughs> and security and, and distance uh, of travel uh, there and um, and universally they were they were in favor of that public space I know we have a workshop on that next meeting um, other other things of note is that the um, Scarborough is most likely going to be the the host of the main senior games mm. which is exciting um, some of the things that we talked about were um, really uh, a desire to build membership for that for the 55 plus um, uh, program um, there's also a discussion about a <coughs> creating a, a level of uh, a VIP member that would not have to pay the um, the waiver if you've reached attained a certain age um, mm. it it is uh, there was, I, unfortunately, that was the time that I had to, had to leave, but there was some discussion around where, where that age level should be set. Um, it's a fairly small fee, but it's a, <clears throat> it's a pay for play for, uh, to be a member, to participate in the activities, you need to, to be a member and, and pay a, a nominal fee. Um, at, I, in my personal opinion, it seems unfortunate that, that, uh, that we have, that we can't make that age 55 so that everyone can, can <clears throat> participate without having an extra barrier of entry and still have you know fees associated for participating in the individual events that cost money but not just to be on the on the list and <clears throat> but it's something to to consider moving forward and that's my editorial on that um, <laughs> housing alliance also met uh, one of the things reported out was the habitat project um, one of the uh, uh, very uh, interesting uh, things of note is that the affordable units that are not habitat specific but that are were part of the project um, initially we had thought that that those would be sold at a discount and that the town would be donating our uh, our our portion of the land which we had donated to, to the project um, to the new buyers but what they are finding is that uh, the buyers that are coming forward and applying are able to afford 
the, the market rate and so that, mm -hmm. that we don't have to worry about. <coughs> one of the things that we con we're concerned about was protecting ourselves from the, mm -hmm. or those, those buyers from cashing in on the, on the uh, profit of that land to, by, by flipping the, the property. Um, and it, it looks like that won't be an issue. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was good news. Uh, there was also the update on the Southgate House, which I think we've, we've all talked about. Basically, the, we, uh, the funding was not secured. We lost a, a large number of points in the process for, for 200 feet of sidewalk being Thank missing. Um, I, I believe that uh, there's been discussion with, with staff that, that possibly we can just put in a sidewalk so that next year it won't be an issue. Um, they, uh, one of the other initiatives for Housing Alliance is documentation and instructions for um, builders on like how to do uh, an affordable housing project. We have lots of density bonuses and we've, we've made it uh, an incentive, but we've never really said like how do, you, how do you do that? And so that's something that that committee is working on. <clears throat> and then there was also a discussion of priorities for 2016. Um, uh, historical preservation also met last night. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there's some bad news that Honeywell House still has post beetles. Um, so those suckers are still there and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, be able to do some more treatment. Apparently there is uh, Falmouth, no, Freeport is also experiencing the same issue mm. and, and they've recently contracted um, with an exterminator, so we're gonna we're gonna see if we can swap notes with them. Um, uh, other interesting note to uh, item to report is that uh, the committee as a whole is is very pleased with the um, the performance of the staff and the responsiveness of the staff surrounding the the Danish Village Arch, which uh, really looks looks nice in its spot. Uh, and we are continuing to update our site list for uh, historic buildings. Um, and cemeteries in, in terms of accuracy and poss potentially expanding that list. Excellent. Thank you. Councilman Katarina. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Conservation Commission will be meeting Monday the 11th. Um, we've got some ongoing work to do with sea level impact and how that will work uh, with infrastructure, um, potential infrastructure impacts in the town and whatever for down the line for planning purposes. Also, uh, what has come up, um, <laughs> which is of interest to me because it's the, my abutting property owner, is looking to do a development on Gorham Road. Uh, it's just in the very, very, very initial uh, idea stage, so to speak. But we will be talking about um, extending sewer to my part of the world and going under the main turnpike. And so we will be looking at that. Um, uh, on long-range planning, excuse me, but also Conservation Commission, because Conservation Commission is going to be asked to walk the property and, you know, make note of, of any potential impacts. Uh, long-range planning, we're going to talk about that sewer extension under Gorham Road, and that meeting is this Friday morning at 8 o'clock. Um, I also will use this time, as you noted, I've been asked to be the communications quarterback, I guess was the best way. I hate the word czar. It sounds <laughs> a little overwhelming, but anyway, I'll be the quarterback for communications for the town council and what we want to get out uh, to the public. I had a great meeting with Tom yesterday. We we're jumping right on, uh, getting Facebook and Twitter uh, going and up to speed. Um, part, another part of the plans are, I'm going to talk to Chief Thurlow, he has that column in the Scarborough Leader, uh, and we're going to grab some of that uh, space on a, at least a quarterly basis. I will be looking for, I, I'm not the journalist, newspaper writer person, so I will be looking for volunteers or I will be dragooning people from the council maybe to make contributions to uh, various uh, columns or whatever. So if you've got anything that you would like to get out, let me know. Um, <clears throat> we also at elections two years ago had a table. I don't know if you guys remember that at the election uh, that I thought was pretty successful. Uh, people were interested. They stopped by. They said hi. They signed up for our email. Uh, notifications. I would like to see us do that again. This is a presidential year, so there's going to be a lot of interest in both June and November, a lot of high traffic coming through. So I would like to see us uh, do that also as part of that. And Peter, um, I will, <laughs> he perks up, I will be uh, forwarding to you um, 
we need to look at a rule and policy around communications that I think should go through the committee, the rules and policy okay. committee. So I, but I'll okay. talk to you about that after. But I, I'm pretty excited because uh, that was what, just for people at home, that's one of our major goals for this year is uh, improved external communication uh, with, the, with the public. So. Just one other piece, if I could. I, I know oh, you yeah. meant to mention it. We do intend to do a very low-level survey, maybe a six or eight-question yeah. survey through our website that really gets a sense of what uh, people's preferences, how they get their information, how they like to, how they prefer to, and that will help inform us which channels we should be thank using. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. I so. have it right here, and I skipped right over it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, community engagement survey of sorts. So stay tuned. Excellent. Um, I'm only going to cover one item. Um, I'll cover a library at the next because I actually forgot to bring something regarding the library, but I'll bring that at the next meeting. Finance, um, you know, it's near and dear to everyone's heart. Um, I was able to have our first uh, joint meeting with the chair of the school board's finance committee, kind of a pre-planning meeting. Um, we had that with the uh, town manager and the superintendent. We have a wrap-up session tomorrow to kind of finalize on the agenda and what we would like to begin the conversation around that budget um, um, and that meeting is tomorrow uh, for the four of us um, just if you can uh, as a precursor to your calendars January 13th is the uh, first uh, town council finance committee meeting um, and that is at four o'clock not three uh, not three o'clock I had that incorrect so I apologize um, here in council chambers and it will be televised um, and then also on January 14th is the joint session of the town council's finance committee as well as the school board and um, i really want to actually even though um, it is a joint committee of those two committees um, it is intended to be a workshop and would like to invite everyone on the council as well as the school board um, a significant part of our conversation is to start the dialogue around um, um, where do we set the budget goal mm from a numerical uh, perspective because the fact is is and, and just a precursor not to editorialize um, while I want to remain open-minded and keep the process open for conversation and creativity we have some constraints around timeline as well as expectations of the staff um, and hopefully we will continue the same type of dialogue that we created last year where this in essence becomes a maybe a precursor uh, for the next year um, so that it's, it's done in advance because it's hard to be creative in a very short period of time with a lot of different opinions and then have staff trying to develop a budget at the same time with you know, their professional guidelines and, and their boundaries. So we'd like everyone to come with their recommendations so that we know where to go from that with our conversation at that level. Um, and um, I'll leave it at that for those, for those meetings. And um, let's see, what else? Um, Councilor Reba? Yes. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you, but do you have a, a, a time? And oh, a I'm sorry. Please? Yes, the 14th is at, I believe it was at, we set it at 2. 2 o'clock. Two, in, in Chambers? In yes. Chambers, yes. Okay. Thank you. I mean, so put, yeah, it was 2 p.m. In Chambers. Um, the okay. others I'll cover later. It's not really that important. Uh, Tell me in just report. Thank you. Uh, not much to report. Uh, Took some time to really focus on some staff development. This time of year, we're doing performance evaluation, so that's really took a lot of my time and attention. Still does uh, mm -hmm. through this month, uh, but I did want to just uh, recall a, a matter I brought up last month, our last meeting. Uh, we are looking at uh, reducing the number of evening hours here at Town Hall. They're just the the traffic here just really doesn't demand having staff here uh, every week. So. Uh, rather than making it go away entirely, because I think it is a great convenience to certain people, mm. uh, we'll be staying open till 6.30 on evening, on meeting evening, so two times a month every other week. And we'll see how that goes. And, um, and if that's a, a problem, we can certainly go back. Uh, just a quick question on that, because I know people near the end of the month, all of a sudden they look and they go, oh, my license, and... Yeah, we could do second and fourth for that matter. Yeah, I'm, that's I'm just I'm trying to come up with some sorry. regularity that people can think, oh, it's, the, it's Wednesday, I can do it. Um, I'm open to suggestions, uh, but we'd like to, to test yeah. it and see how it's received. So um, I'd like to consider something in February. So if you have uh, input or comment as to which nights we should try, um, all ears. Uh, also, just a reminder, Winterfest, which is a community service-sponsored oh, wow. event that's on January 16th. It's really centered and based down here at the outdoor rink uh, adjacent to the turf field. 
and that's roughly from 1 in the afternoon to 5.30 p.m., and it ends with fireworks. Uh, at this point, things look promising. We have <laughs> snow on the ground, and the weather's getting cold, so the rink should freeze. Uh, but stay tuned. Um, in years past, we've had to come up with a, a contingency plan, so uh, <laughs> but just uh, put that on your calendar. And just the last thing I wanted to mention, and I'll start to send some information out. I'm still not sure if it's something we can tackle right away, but we're intrigued by uh, a, a nationwide program called Star Communities. It's kind of centered around the sustainability notion, which uh, can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people, but it's, a, it's an incredibly well-constructed um, set of, uh, a, of a framework, if you will, uh, whereby communities can kind of rate themselves. I'm not so interested in seeing our score and comparing us to others, because frankly, uh, it's still a fairly new program. We'd be one of the smaller communities. Um, but more importantly, I, I think what it does is it identifies gaps, and it, it's a real conversation piece. Uh, my hesitancy uh, is only the fact that it's a fairly massive staff undertaking to collect mm. the data. Mm. Uh, and I'm, I'm confident <coughs> we'll do it at some point. I'm just uh, a bit noncommittal as to when we're going to pull it off. Uh, I wouldn't even mention it if I, if I wasn't interested in it. So stay tuned, and I'll start to feed some of that information out to you as we know more. Excellent. Any questions for the manager? Not seeing any. Uh, moving into uh, council member comments. So I'm going to start with uh, <coughs> Council Rowan. Thank you. <coughs> so uh, I'm still trying to understand the uh, state subsidy. Uh, I'm just going to keep talking through this until I can figure it out. Um, I, I just wanted to highlight that uh, our high point was 2009 at seven million dollars. Um, since then, we've dropped 34 percent, over 34 percent. In that same time frame. Cumberland is up 2.48%. Cape Elizabeth is up 10.67%. Uh, Gorham is up 2.86%. Falmouth is up almost 31%. And South Portland is up over 44%. So uh, <coughs> I'm still, still trying to figure it out, as I said. Um, <laughs> Good luck with that. So, yeah, yeah. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> I appreciate the indulgence. <laughs> indulgence. <laughs> Uh, uh, something else that I've been kind of looking at is the uh, municipal audit reports and trying to just do some, some benchmarking. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, kind of send something over to, to uh, uh, Chairman Donovan and see if, if there's anything worth sharing with, with the other members of the councilor, but I, I think there's some interesting stuff there. Um, and then um, the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, uh, Tom sent out an email recently about the staff doing uh, volunteering for Habitat for Humanity. Um, I feel like there was some interest on the on the town oh, yeah. council, and uh, I just didn't want to drop the ball. So um, I'm going to reach out to Habitat for Humanity and try and do a Saturday. Uh, if you if anyone wants to participate and wanted to to um, you know email me about availability, I'll I'll great. Okay, coordinate great. that. Excellent. So that's it. Council Caterina. Oh, and Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Just very quickly. Um, yeah. Happy New Year to everyone. Also. Um, as part of our communications, I'd like to see us, and, and also our goal setting, we talk about being a little more visible in the community and, and doing things. And I know there's, you know, there's the fuel assistance coming up. I sent you guys, all you guys an email while I was sitting here about the, the date, the time, because Council Cayazzo requested it. Thank you. Yeah. And if I don't do it now, it'll never get done. But, they, you know, there's the Winterfest. There are just other things coming up, and I really encourage you to to come, even if it's only for a little while, and just chat with people, just to be there. Because I, a lot of people, believe it or not, have no clue who their town councils are. I mean, they may know our name, but they don't really know our faces, and they don't really, they don't watch things. The only time they come is if it affects them uh, in a negative manner. So for us to be out there, and you know, when it's not negative, it's positive, it's something good, and be helping. Uh, to be out there and be seen would be awesome. So that's just my comment for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Siasno. Uh, happy New Year to everybody. Um, not a whole lot on the comment section. It's been kind of quiet. I hope uh, everybody's holidays were wonderful. I would just like to uh, extend something to Councilor Katarina about communications. Um, I would encourage also some kind of uh, outreach to the school as well because the school board as well because they're running parallel yep. programs as well and I think there's yeah, some good, good some good interfacing it doesn't have to be all or nothing on either side but I think right. there's some good overlap there that could be very very helpful um, 
other than that, um, I, I really hope our, our 2016 is, is a, a prosperous one in town. I think we're going to, um, doesn't seem to be too many um, challenges on the horizon, immediate challenges, but I know that will change soon enough. But um, <laughs> I'm looking forward. forward to continuing on. Great. Similarly, I say Happy New Year to everybody, and I just want to give a shout out. I'm, I'm continuing to be impressed by our police department, the things that they've oh. been doing, Project Hope, and other things. But most recently, they are involved in locating you know, a missing individual, which um, just and, and you know and, and kind of the theme of communication. I'm very very impressed. They, if people haven't seen it, the police department have up a Facebook page, and they do a really really good job of kind of updating the community about things they're doing, things that have gone on. So just, just, just a shout out and thanks to all those folks. They, they, they really are engaging the community in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. Um, just a couple items for myself before we adjourn. Um, Happy New Year. Uh, I hope everyone had a uh, really good holiday season. I, it was great, I thought. Uh, this year was very nice. Um, wanted to mention if you weren't watching before our regular meeting we did have a workshop with members of the transportation committee as well as um, other participants from the planning board and a few other organizations regarding what is called complete streets and it was a um, a very informative and great workshop that talks about the continuity and the consistency of the design of our roads and um, kind of the interdependence between everything from walking biking and cars and how they all have to function together and um, it really ties into uh, one of our biggest actions to, uh, in the past couple of meetings is, you know, I think I, I calculated it. Um, there was a total of 17 committees in which we appointed 37 volunteers. Wow. And I just wanted to mention, you know, we received a policy recommendation from the Transportation Committee. And, you know, you see a lot of former counselors and former planning board members. And there's a lot of experience and expertise and thoughtfulness that gets put into the work. And it really does make our job as counselors much easier uh, when we rely on their contribution. And so I really want to say thank you to the Transportation Committee for that recommendation and for staff and what they've done. Really, it's um, really a policy. The way I viewed it, and I was kind of quiet, it really was a policy statement about what we've been doing over the last decade, decade and a half, and really shapes how we go forward. And so it's a very exciting time, I believe, and it's a great way to start off the new year. Um, wanted to mention, um, so this is a little hard, I lost a really dear friend, kind of, um, I'm, uh, what's the word, uh, transcending, I guess, uh, Jessica, because she always had a few old Scarborough residents who we lost. And uh, we lost a couple this past week, and one in particular I wanted to mention as a dear friend, Henry Bellavance. Um, they did an incredible story on Henry in one of the local papers, I can't remember which. Um, he survived and uh, contributed to three of our wars, World War II, Vietnam, and Korea. Um, came home after 22 and a half years and built a family and uh, was a master electrician and was loved by everyone. And, he passed away, and I just want to send condolences because he was known around Scarborough as the Admiral. And um, he, was a, he was a really great guy and a great family, and I just wanted to uh, mention him as well as George Lawson. Um, there's actually a bench mentioned for or dedicated to his son in the, uh, who we lost as well, who was a veteran, um, and he lived right behind here. So to the two of them, uh, Godspeed. And I did want to mention around the communications, one of the personal takeaways that I took from our workshop, just so the public is aware, because I want to contribute um, not only as a group, but personally, is that I created what is being, I'm kind of dubbing as Sean's Coffee's Corner. <laughs> so I've scheduled and sent everyone an appointment. I believe I've heard back from just about everybody, um, in which uh, maybe it's a per personal time to connect once in a great while to have a cup of coffee and talk, talk shop and uh, everything else around what we're doing and where we're going. Hopefully that contributes to a uh, more communicative uh, town council as well as relationships that we're looking to strengthen. So, I appreciate everyone uh, making that time for me. And um, with that, um, if there is nothing else, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Everybody's pointing. Second. Second. No, Peter's saying. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> That's unanimous. Thank you. Is that the quick? Wow, Bill. Oh, darn it. Yeah. 45 minutes. It's bad.